skies and all of that. And hopefully it was that beautiful in your life today at your meal and whatever you did to celebrate Mother's Day. We're going to read in Proverbs chapter number uh, 18, Proverbs 18, verse number 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day. I thank you for your goodness and mercy and love to us. Thank you for the many provisions you made for us and even this church house we can meet in this night. Thank you for these folks that have gathered on this evening. I pray that the Spirit of God will work in the midst and Brother James delivers thy word that you help us all to have open ears, open mind, and open heart and receive thy word, the living word of God, in a way that would be pleasing unto thee and likewise that we'd be able to grow in the Lord. Let you bless the music, bless in all that we do. May you get much glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 117 in your book. Please get a hymnal and turn to 117. We'll all stand together and sing Living by Faith. 117. All right, let's go ahead and sing it out. Living by Faith.
welcome. Great to see everyone on this beautiful Sunday evening. I want to remind all of those home at Vacation Bible School that will be a very brief meeting tonight. Again, we're changing things just a smidgen, and uh, so we'll be going a, a little bit different direction than what we have the last few years with that. And so we touch base with that tonight. And then, we're, then ahead of us here, and Sunday nights ahead of us, we'll be having uh, some more extensive meetings. So if you're helping at Vacation Bible School, be sure to be right down here in the front just for a few moments. Otherwise, Wednesday, all the regular activities, Thursday, are so winning. And uh, let's see, Matt's not back there, is he? But that uh, had Matt uh, Kennedy led a couple of people to Christ uh, at Perkins. I think it was Perkins. Was it Perkins? Uh, this week, an exciting testimony. Uh, folks were uh, actually passing through, I guess, heading to New York, but they found Jesus Christ along the path. Amen. That's so really great. And uh, then Saturday, youth activity, and that'll be at 2 o'clock and uh, to 4 o'clock, and uh, Olympics. You know, a great time with that. Crown College will be here a week from Wednesday. I encourage you about being your place for that. You will be. I know all of you are faithful week after week in your services, but <laughs> looking forward to that. And then the Waysport Christian School kindergarten is right around the corner. Uh, kindergarten graduation is right around the corner. And then a couple, what, three weeks from tonight, I think it is. Hopefully it'll be a night just like this. And after church is completed, we'll have a cookout and uh, eat after the service. Have a good time at Vacation Bible School there on on June the 6th. Please pray for the uh, for the Grinstead family. They were home for just a little bit of time, not very long at all, but have just gone back uh, down there to Argentina. I hope you'll read the article on the back for the bulletin and uh, pray for them. Uh, anytime, all the time when you're praying, you'll be sure to pray for them. Let's just come ahead and wait on us for the offering for this evening. <clears throat> Let's pray and ask his blessings upon it. Dear Lord God, thank you for your many provisions for us. You bless us so greatly. We're grateful for that. Help us to be thankful and grateful always for all that you've done for us. Help us to have faith in you, confidence and courage, knowing that you will take care of us, that we are your children and you're God, but you're also Father, and that you will always take care of us. And Lord, bless now this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
myself and my brother Jonathan went down to North Carolina and uh, we preached the revival for my brother Joel. And so Joel wanted us to do all the music and the instrumentalists, the instruments and all that. And, uh, and, and he wanted us to sing together. And uh, the four of us never sung together before. And uh, we're preachers, but I'm not singers. But Joel really wanted that. And so we picked out this song. And we were singing on the chorus. Think about those words. And it's in the South. So people get a little more excited, you know, amen and shouting. And there's a lady on the second row. And she left out the loudest scream I've ever heard. And it kind of startled me. And we all lost our spot. Joel's used to it. He just kept going, singing along. He has his special solo now. Three of us were like, what's this lady doing? I mean, she unleashed this. Just screams. And, uh, boy, but, hey, I hope you get excited about that day that we'll see Jesus face to face. And if you can't get excited, church, uh, about these things, I don't know what gets you excited. But uh, we can get excited at ball games and parties and all these things. We should be just as excited about these things. And so when you're singing, hey, if you feel like screaming out or saying amen or waving a hand, hey, that's all right. You're praising Jesus. So let's sing that second verse and think about that day that that will be with the heaven. Amen. Faithfulness 
And uh, this is the third message I preached today, you know, mothers. And these ones been different. Uh, I started in Sunday school today with the teenagers in Ephesians 6, 2, where it talks about honoring your father and mother. And I talked about that word honor that we need to value. And I had them tell me, the teenagers tell me different things that they value. If it's video games or their cell phone or you value your car, your house. And I said, that's the same value that we need to put on our mothers. That we need to, they're our prized possession. Just like you don't want anybody to ruin your car, ruin your, your new dress. And we need to value our mothers. So I challenged the teenagers with that. Then I preached in children's church today about making mommy proud. And talked about some Bible characters that made their mom proud of who, who they were. That, that The things they accomplished throughout the Bible. And uh, some of the kids named some evil people. And no doubt those moms are not proud of how they behave. So those messages were more geared toward teenagers and then children. And tonight this message is more geared towards the moms and the dads. And it's Mother's Day. And so we're going to, I'll emphasize more mom. But I know it's a team, it's your partnership as moms and dads. So I'm going to go to a passage. And um, I don't want to take this statement out of context. But I was looking through and the Holy Spirit this kind of, I felt like this is the way the Lord wanted me to take this tonight. And I want you to go to Job chapter 1 and verse 20, 21, and verse, verses 20 and 21. Kind of a different take on this verse. And, um, and I don't want to misquote something that what the Bible says here. But I want to bring forth, I think, something that is true that we can have in our lives. Look at Job chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We're looking at verse number 21 where it says, I came out of this out of my mother's womb, I came into this world with nothing. And then he makes the statement, and, I, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I know in the life of Job, he is talking about the Lord taketh and the Lord giveth. He said, I'm leaving this world with nothing. I was looking up some different individuals that have done weird things when they got buried or what they requested. And there was a Nigerian man that was buried that buried his father in an $88,000 BMW SUV to fill his promise to buy his dad a nice car. Should have done that when he could have actually driven it, but he buried him in, buried him in a vehicle close to $100,000. There was another man that was buried in a $500,000, half a million dollar Bentley, and uh, because he said this, he loved it and wanted to be buried in that car. So I get that Job is saying here, listen, I came in this world nothing, and I can't take my car with me. I can't take my cattle with me. I can't take my house with me. I can't take all these, these possessions with me. But I was thinking about some things that we can take with us when we leave this world. And so the title of the message tonight is this. I came out with nothing, but mom helped me leave with something. Write that down. Read that again. I came out with nothing. But my mom helped me leave with something. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come tonight thanking you for allowing us to be together in the house of God. Lord, I'm so encouraged always when I get to be around the Christians of the Mayor Baptist Church to be able to sing these songs. The night they got me, that second one has got me so fired up about that day. We'll see you face to face. No more problems, no more sickness, no more temptation, no more battle with this flesh, no more uh, corrupt uh, world that we live in. But Lord, we'll get to see Jesus face to face. And I'm sure tonight there's ones that are thinking about seeing their mom once again face to face. And Lord, we're thankful that we can be gathered together. We ask tonight that the Holy Spirit be in our midst. Holy Spirit be our teacher, instruct us, guide us. Lord, motivate us as parents. To be the best parents we can be to leave our children with something of value in Jesus' name. Amen. As you consider Job, man, right off the bat in that verse 1, great things that are said about him. There's a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and a man that was perfect and upright, a man that feared God and eschewed evil. This man, Job, was an amazing Christian man. Feared God. He hated evil. He was perfect and upright. 
Look at all the things that God had given to him. He blessed him with an amazing sized family, seven sons and three daughters, so 10 children, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and it says he was the greatest man in all the East. The greatest man in all the East. So he had all these things going for him. And so the devil saw this and comes to God and asks permission to put his hand upon Job. I want to see, I want to test your, your greatest man in all these. I want to test your man that is perfect and upright and see him, where he will be when, when I take all these things from him. And so God allowed this and, and we see the story, you know the story. And they came in the one day and they're drinking and eating in the house and they came, a messenger came and said, the oxen they were plowing, the asses were feeding beside them and the saviors fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell it to thee. And he goes verse after verse of all these things that he lost. Well, the animals were bad enough, but then to have his children all die. And then we find out his wife even um, turns her back on him. And so that's why he then rents his clothes and shaves his head, falls to the ground. I love his expression here. It doesn't say he got mad at God, but he worshiped God. And truly, that's why he was perfect and upright and greatest man in all the East. But then he said, I came in this world with nothing. I didn't come with a with a, with a, 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 a diaper on. I didn't come with a, a onesie on. I didn't come with a dress on or a suit and tie. I came in this world naked. I came in this world with nothing. And when I leave this world, I'm leaving with nothing as far as physical things. Can't take our house. Can't, can't take our car. Can't take our Bentley and, and, and our BMW. You can put it in the ground, but it's going to stay there. But as we think about tonight... I came out into, into this world with nothing, but mom helped me leave with something. And tonight, you parents, father and mother, but especially mothers, you can help your children. You can help not just your, your children that, that were raised in your home, but even your adult children. You can pray for them and, and encourage them and help them to leave with something. Oh, what can they leave with? Look at three C's tonight. First of all, I can leave this world with Christ. I came to this world with nothing. I didn't come to this world with Christ, but I can leave with Christ. Let's look over in the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3. The Apostle Paul is exhorting Timothy in so many different areas. Great passages. Um, of exhortation of how to live the Christian life, how to be a strong man for the Lord, how to pray, how to have faith, how to live righteous in an ungodly world. Chapter 3 is all about the end times, about these perilous times, how wicked and how bad it's going to be. And then he says to him, even in verse 13, chapter 3, he says, The evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And so Paul's saying, This is how bad it's going to be. They're going to wax worse and worse. But he says in verse 14, But continue thou in the thing which thou hast learned and hast been sure of them, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. I think we all know this on a Sunday night, but none of us were born in this world with the Lord Jesus Christ in our heart. That would have been a great thing if we could have been born perfect like Adam and Eve. But when Adam and Eve committed sin, that sin nature was passed down to all mankind. And so when I came forth into this world, I was born a sinner. Oh, I wasn't born with Christ in my heart, but was born with Christ in my life. And I'm so thankful for that. Personally, said that to my dad and mom. I'm so thankful to my dad and mom that I was born with Christ in my life, though. And you think about the boys and girls throughout this world today. One third of this name, this world has never heard a clear presentation of the gospel. Don't they don't have a clue what the name Jesus Christ means? Our Savior, Redeemer. They've never heard about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for their sins, or that they go to heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the resurrected Christ. They don't know anything about heaven and hell. They don't know anything about Christianity. And I'm thankful that I wasn't born with Christ in me, but I was born with Christ in my life. That at an early age, like many of you. We were brought to church. At an early age, I was 
told in my home that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins, that God loved me. At an early age, I saw my dad and mom praying. I saw them with the Bible open and read it to me. And so I couldn't get Christ and salvation just because my mom was a Christian. Some people often will say that when we're out knocking doors and will say, if you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure you'd wake up in heaven? And many times we'll say, yes, I've always been a Christian. You've heard that before? You've heard that a lot, Brother Jeff, haven't we? I've always been a Christian. And I don't try to, to be argumentative, but I say, well, wait a second. We can't always be a Christian because when we are born in this world, we were born not with Lord Jesus Christ. We came to this world with nothing and we were born as a sinner. And so I couldn't have my mom's Christ just because I was in her and just because she was a Christian. It was not passed down through my bloodstream. I didn't get it through the genetics of her. Now, as I think about my mom and dad, a lot of people think that we look more alike. I look more like my dad than my mom. But a lot of areas of my life, I'm much more like my mom than my dad. And it's interesting. I no doubt your children have personalities like you or your spouse. And in our family, take the five of us. I won't tell you who all is like that, but I know all five of our personalities. And I can say, they'd say, who was more like dad and who's more like mom? And I know I have a lot more of my mom's personality. And so I might have similar personality and, 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 and certain genetics, but I cannot get Christ through my mom. And I can't be saved just because mom is saved. But as we go back to the scriptures, it says, And now from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, moms have to teach their, teach their children the way of salvation. Dads need to teach their children the way of salvation. That's why we have children's church. That's why we run church buses. That's why we have vacation Bible school. Because moms and dads in this town are not teaching their children the way of salvation. And so we try to play mom and dad and try to show the love of Christ and explain the way of salvation. But you look here in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and look at verse number 5. Timothy learned these truths from his mother and his grandmother. 2 Timothy 1 5, it says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and, in, and I am persuaded that in thee also. We see in 2 Timothy 1 verse 13, it says, Hold fast the form, sound word, form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Timothy learned these truths. Oh, he learned many of these truths from the Apostle Paul. But he had the foundation through his mother and his grandmother that taught him the way of salvation. Once again, I can't, I often try to not forget, but to thank God for allowing me to have a godly grandmother like Mrs. Bixer. I didn't know my grandma Omar. I was only three years old when she went to be to heaven, but I know she influenced my mom, which influenced me. And tonight, you need to be thankful and praise the Lord if you had a mother or a grandmother or some lady, an aunt, or someone in your life that loved you enough to explain to you true salvation. There's a lot of boys and girls and a lot of adults that never had somebody to love them enough to show them the truth. So teach your children the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, that they will help them know and understand salvation. And I think that's, once again, your desire. That's why you're in church. But don't let the church, don't let the Christian school, don't let the children's church, don't let the Sunday school, don't let them teach your children everything and you miss out on all of it as the parent. The number one influence on a child's life is dad and mom. Now, if your child gets saved at Bible school, that's wonderful. If your child gets saved at a Christian school chapel, that's wonderful. But the foundation has to begin in the home. Us praying for our children to be saved. Us teaching them the truth. Us teaching them right and wrong. What are we teaching them? Teaching them that sin is wrong. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 10, there is none righteous, no, not one. Teaching them that what you see on TV, what you hear spoken, what you see around them, that is sin and there's a payment for sin and that payment for sin is death and hell. Teach them that there is a real heaven and a real hell. Sometimes parents don't want to talk about hell and, and don't want to talk about the severity of hell and, and the darkness of hell. And, and I don't like to either, but there's a real hell. And if we don't warn them and tell them about Jesus Christ, your babies, your children 
We'll die and go there. Oh, teach them the wonders of heaven. And Jesus spoke in John, uh, John there and, and taught about let not heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Tell them about the wonders of heaven and the splendors of heaven. Oh, teach them about God's amazing love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever with him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Teach them that God loves them beyond any comprehension. Teach them that Christ was perfect. Hebrews 4.15, it says that he was tempted in all points as we were, yet without sin. They're going to hear the lies from those outside the church house that Jesus sinned, or that Jesus wasn't perfect. But take them to the word of God and teach them that Christ was perfect. Teach them that Christ suffered and died for their sins and that he was buried and rose again according to the scripture. In 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible tells us that verse 3 and 4, that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again. Teach them that Jesus is alive. Oh, on Easter Sunday, celebrate much about Christ and a little about the Easter bunny or, or the Easter candy. That Jesus is alive. Matthew 28, 6, the angel said, he is not here for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Teach them that our Savior is not a dead Savior, but that he is ever living. Teach them that by faith, we can be saved. We read this in the passage. And then the salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Salvation only comes through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. And then not yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. And so many young people and so many people are tainted that we have to do good and our good outweighs our bad. And we get into heaven and we have to work to earn something. But by the grace of God, we are saved. Teach them that they can live in heaven forever through Christ Jesus. And we need to be the ones teaching those, them those truths. Even after they're saved. Get them grounded on sound doctrine. Help them know why they're saved. Who they're saved. How they are saved. Who saved them and explain these truths to them? So I came into this world with nothing, but my mom left me with Christ. Talk much about Christ. Lift up Jesus Christ. Talk about the power of Christ. And that once you are saved as a child, that now you have literally God in flesh, Jesus Christ, dwelt inside of you. The same power that resurrected Jesus is the same power that lives inside of you to conquer any temptation or sin. And listen, we might say, well, that's what we should teach our 7, 8, 9-year-olds or our 15 and 16-year-olds. But we need to continue to pray for our adults and the adult children that they continue to live for Christ. And that they dwell and walk in the Spirit and have that power and tap into the power of Christ. And so I came into this world with nothing, but my mom left me with Christ. Number two, I came into this world with nothing, but mom left. I left this world with care. I left this world with care. I love this, left this world with being loved. Look at Isaiah 49. This is a topical message tonight, so I'm kind of just bouncing all over here tonight. But I don't want to tell you anything out of context. But Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, look at verses 15. Isaiah 49, 15, it says, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yet they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. And God's saying here is, listen, there might be moms that forget about their children, but God never forgets about us. That's not the message tonight, but that's the truth behind that verse is that many children are neglected. Many children are forgotten. And maybe tonight you sit here as an orphan. You sit here tonight feel like you didn't have a mom to call. You didn't have a mom that expressed love or hugged you. Or you didn't have a mom that said, I love you today. Or maybe even your mom is in heaven. But thank God that in that verse it says that we have not been forgotten and God never forgets us. But this picture of a mother with her baby in her arms, nursing this child with so much love and comfort. That light caress of that child feeling so safe and protected and nurtured by this mother. This is a picture of God, a Heavenly Father, who takes care of our every need and loves us. This mother does everything possible to provide love and care for her child. <coughs> Why is it that when our babies are, you know, two months old or six months old, maybe a year old, they can do no wrong? There's not a judgmental spirit toward them. There's no hate, not a hateful spirit toward them. There's not a bitter spirit toward them. 
But what happens at age two, three, four, five now when they start sassing back? When they start keeping you up all night, when they're throwing their temper tantrums, what happens when they're 16 years old and they now say no to you or shut a door in your face or, or say shut up or say I hate you or walk out on you? What happens when they're 35 or 40 and won't call you on Mother's Day or won't spend time with you or won't, or won't act right? Listen, I know when that baby's in our arms and we can caress them and hold them and nurture them and feed them, they're easy to love. But I know when they get a personality, it can be more challenging. But I'm thankful up to this point and no doubt to the point that I die that I'm going to know that I've always been loved by that lady. And I came to this world not with any kind of love. Maybe before when I was in the womb, she already loved me. But I came to this world not having that. But I'm going to leave knowing that I was cared for by Debbie Bixler. And I hope tonight, mothers, that your boys and your girls will leave this world and on their last breath, they'll know that you moms love them no matter what. Look beyond their faults. Look beyond their sinful habits. Look beyond their pride. Because you have the same problems and I have the same problems. And look into their heart and love them when they, like when they first put that baby into your arms. If we, can, if we would not lose sight of that, through those teenage years, through those young adult years, and maybe once again, you have adult children that are not speaking to you right now, and it hurts, and maybe you, maybe, I don't know who's in the wrong, but if you can just remember them as a little baby and how you held them in this verse, as we read, as, as a mother cannot forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Oh, a mother, a mother doesn't neglect that nursing baby. They love them and care for them all the days of your life. Moms care for and love your children no matter what. You say, but you don't know what they did to me. You don't know they, that they forgot about me. You don't know how hurtful they were in their words or actions. Jesus says, love your enemies. Jesus said, forgive 70 times 7. Swallow our prides and love your children. I read this quote today, I thought it was pretty good. When everything is lost, when you're weathered and beaten down by everything around you, you can be certain that your mother's love will still be there for you. Maybe you're on the other end of the day and you don't feel loved by that mother. Maybe your mother doesn't always express that in words. I hope she will in her actions. And I hope as a mother will be the right kind of mother. So a mother that will care. Let's look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the love verses. But let me just read these verses. And I hope this is the kind of love and care you have for your children. And maybe tonight you don't have children. Maybe God has not blessed you with children. But you've, 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 you've parented many children. Maybe at a church house. Maybe nephews and nieces. Maybe somebody else in your life that you've tried to parent. You've tried to love and help as a mom or father. And so we can express and have these same uh, characteristics of trying to help other children have Christ or to care for them. Look what it says in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long. That means love, as we use the word charity here. I think we all know that means love. And so let me just, each of these statements break down. Charity suffereth long. That means love is patient. Love is patient. That's hard sometimes. Be patient with children, isn't it? And maybe it gets even harder to be patient with adult children because you can't tell them now what to do. When you're parenting a six-year-old, you can ground them or spank them or have consequences for them. But now when they're 36 or 26 or 46, you have a lot of times to step back and be patient with those children and realize that they're human beings. And realize they make mistakes just like the mistakes you have made. But true love is patient. True love, it says, charity looks over long and is kind. Kind. Talking about or leaving our children with care. Being kind to your children. Oh, it then goes on to say, charity envieth not. Charity, love does not envy. It does not boast. It goes on to say, charity bond not itself. It doesn't boast. It does not puff up. Charity, love is not, is not proud. It's not self-seeking. It says in verse number five, it doth not behave itself unseemly. It means that it's, and it goes on, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. 
Love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but love rejoices in the truth. I love verse number seven that it says it beareth all things. That means it always protects. If anybody should be protecting your children, it should be mom and dad, right? And I hope we we'll protect our children and protect them. I notice that sometimes even parents don't always stand up for their children, protect their children like they should. Many parents want to think that, oh, yep, their kid did that. Why don't we have enough trust in our kid? And sometimes they do, but they will protect and, and they will be willing to bear all things. And it goes on to say, believes all things, always trusts. I guess this is what I was just saying. And then it says, and, and it goes on and says, hope with all things, always hopes. And then endures all things. It puts up with anything. True love puts up with anything. And I hope that we will truly care and love for our children May your children leave this world knowing that they are loved, loved, loved. Don't preach to them. Love them. Don't give them speeches all the time. Care for them. 99% of the time when I did wrong, I knew I did wrong, right? When you did wrong, you knew that you did wrong. Then I need another message. Then I need to be scolded again. I'm going to talk about a third point about training and teaching them. But most of all, I just need to be reminded that I was loved. And many times when I was punished, and I was loved, that's why I didn't do it again. Not because I was preached at, because I was loved. I remember one time doing something really stupid as a young adult in college. And, and regret it. And, um, but it was really foolish. And I'll never forget where I was at. And my mom, when I expressed what I did wrong, and she didn't say words. She just wrapped her arms around me and hugged my neck and loved on me. That meant more than anything. It meant so much more than her even giving me a Bible verse or preaching at me at that moment. I knew she cared about me and that I was loved. And it helped me to say, I'm not going to do that stupid thing again. And so I'm all for sometimes saying, hey, we better not do that. We need to train them, teach them, correct them. But many times just showing them the love of Christ is what helps them to know to do right. And so I came into this world with nothing, but I know I'm leaving with care. Leaving this world with lots of love. And moms, I hope that you'll love your children no matter what. Number three, and this is something that, that we are striving to teach our children, that my parents try to teach us, and you strive to teach your children. But I came into this world with nothing along this line, but Lord willing, Lord willing, I'll leave this world with character. I'll leave this world with character. And this is important, parents, that we get this right now if you have young children or teenagers. Look at Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up means to instruct a child in the way he should go. Train your child in the way thou wouldst have him to choose and follow. Now, that's everybody has that right, and, and everyone has that privilege to train their children the way they want to train them. God gives parents that freedom. You are in the church, in the church house, so you're striving to train them in a biblical way, right? There's a lot of parents, uh, when I'm out visiting, say, well, we give our children, you know, we're going to let them choose if they want to believe in God or, or go to church. We're not going to force it, but we'll allow them to go. We're not going to force it. They have that right. God gives them a free will to train their children. They mess up a lot of times. That's why their kids are a mess. But we're in church tonight, and so we're all wanting to do it right. And so we are trying to train or instruct them in a way that we want them to end up being. Those tender years, as soon as he or she is capable of receiving instruction, when does that begin? Well, I think it begins even in as early age of one. And, and those early years, just that small age, they already know to do right and wrong. And sometimes parents wait too long to start instructing and teaching. And at that point, it's too late. Six years old, it's too late to be already training and instructing that child on how to behave. And so as we train them, let me challenge us tonight to this out for me and my wife, but you parents have children, and right now maybe you're older and this doesn't apply to you, but set yourself some goals on how you want your children to be in 20 years. I've heard my dad say that often, and I think it was great advice. He said he didn't see us right now when he was training us or teaching us or punishing us. It wasn't about right now this incident at age 7, but it was how is James going to learn from this so he could change his life at age 27. 
or age 37. See your children as adults without treating them like adults, but train them of where you want to be. Set goals for them in the area of hard work, in the area of honesty, in the area of loving others, in the area of humility. Train them, teach them to behave and act right. So those tender years, as soon as we can begin to instruct them, may we not miss it. Teach or train them to be a person of character. That's having a good reputation. So to think about some words that go along with that idea of character, train and teach them to be a man or woman of integrity. Teach that child, that teenager, maybe that opportunity as a grandparent when you have time with them. Teach them, even as grandparents, to be a person of integrity. That means somebody that keeps their word. And they have respect. Keeps their word. A person of integrity. That the word integrity goes right along with the idea of honesty, right? Oh, that's an important thing to teach a child. To be somebody that's honest. They're not a liar. And there are certain things that I feel like we really got punished about. Was when we were disrespectful or we lied. Those two things. Man, my dad didn't have as much patience, which was good. He wanted to make sure we had utmost respect for our mother and for authority and that we were people that did not lie and that we were not that, that we were men of honesty and truthfulness. So teach your children, train them, instruct them to have integrity, teach them and train them to have honesty, to be truthful, not a liar. Teach your children to be courageous. Teach them to be courageous, to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ, to have strength, to persevere, to not have fear. Listen, we live in 2022, and if you have little ones like I do, we live in a scary world, don't we? I know I sometimes people say, well, I don't even think I'm going to have kids in this crazy world, this wicked world. Listen, we can't live with a spirit of fear. God has not given us that, that, that spirit of fear, and we have faith, as, as much faith as they had back in the Bible, we have the same faith in God today, we have the same God. But we need to teach our young people not to fear what's going on. Hey, respect that and, and know what's out there, but to be people of courage, people of strength, people that will persevere. Men and women someday that are, have faith, that are willing to stand up for the truth and not back down. Teach them to have courage. That when sometimes they're out with their friends and teenagers, teach them to have courage to say no to drugs or alcohol. Teach them to say no to some guy or some girl that's going to act wrong with them. Teach our children to have courage. Number four, teach them to have loyalty. These are all words that represent character. Teach your children to be loyal, to have loyalty. That word loyalty, the same along the line of being faithful, but loyalty. Most of all, being loyal to God. Not turning their back on God. Not swaying one way or another, but to be loyal and faithful to God. And teach them that God will be loyal and faithful to them until the day they die. Teach them to be well faithful to their family, to stand up for their family, to defend their family. Teach them to be well and faithful to their church, their church here, this local assembly, Mayo Baptist Church. Listen, if you can't be faithful to your own church, then what can you be faithful to? Not hurting or, 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 or talking bad about the pastor or leadership, teaching them to the adore and to respect the pastor's wife, and teaching them to be faithful and loyal to this church house, that they're not going to be wishy-washy, not unstable, and, and maybe one day come and one day go, but to be faithful and loyal to the church, to be faithful and loyal to their job. I respect men and women that said, man, this is my job, this is what God asked me to do, and I'm going to work this job for 40, 50 years. That teaches our kids a lot that, hey, dad went to work the same place. And sometimes God moves you around to different jobs. But you were faithful in your example. Your children be faithful. Loyalty. Reliability. Teach your children to be reliable. Able to be trusted. That they're going to be there. To be reliable. That they're going to be there at the job. They're going to be there at school. They're going to get their homework done. <laughs> Teach them these character issues. Teach them to be hard workers. That they're going to get the job done. It might be simple tasks like mowing the grass or vacuuming the carpet. It might be a simple task out there that you've asked them to do. But you ask them to do that and you teach them. You work alongside of them and you're teaching them to be a hard worker. Because when they leave this world, that's the testimony you want them to have. That they were hardworking people. And then teach them along this line of character that to be caring. To be caring. They love and care for all people. That they're, not, that they're not selfish, but they're unselfish. It's not about me, me, me. It's about how can I be a help and give to others. These are all great character qualities. Integrity, honesty, courage, loyalty, reliability, hard work, and caring. 
And, and I know our parents instructed us and trained us at young ages, as children, as teenagers, that Lord willing throughout life that will maintain these. And we can walk out of this world, leave this world. We can, and we lay in that casket that Lord willing people will say about us, that was a man or a woman of character. And those are things that I didn't come into this world with. It's just not a natural thing to start working hard. It's not a natural thing to tell the truth. It's not a natural thing to be reliable or, or to be trustworthy. But it has to be taught, doesn't it? And who is it taught by? Mom and dad. And it's taught according to the word of God. And make sure we teach them. We teach them with biblical truths behind these. Teach them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That Satan is the father of lies. Teach them about being a servant. Teach them about being loyal to God. And, and make sure it's all backed up by scripture. But we can teach our young people to, to be men and women of character. So tonight, in conclusion, what are your children going to leave? How, what are your children going to leave with when they leave this world? I hope all our children will leave this world and, and have an opportunity to go to heaven. If you gave them everything and you forgot to give them Christ, then you failed epically, <laughs> failed terribly as a parent. So make sure we, that is the number one thing. What is it propagate that a man gained the whole world and lose his own soul? So please pray for your children's salvation. Don't preach it down the throat, but talk about the love of Christ and the mercy and the grace of God and, and help them to understand somebody's going to brainwash them. You're going to let the world do that or you're going to teach them the Bible, let the Bible brainwash them so they can learn Christ at a young age. And that from a child that has known the scriptures was able to teach thee salvation. Oh, do they love Christ? Are they Christians? Number two, will they know that, that they are loved and cared about when they leave this world? Sad thing is, some of you tonight were always loved by a mom or dad, and some of your parents are in heaven. And you can say, Lord James, I really don't feel like I was loved and cared for by my mom or dad. And that's sad. Uh, I'm really sorry about that. Because no child deserves that. But I hope we won't act the same way that our parents acted towards you. And I hope we'll be that much better. And I hope that we can't give them anything financially or materially. But if we can give them all the love and care, the love of Christ, they can see the love of Christ in you. And you can, and your children feel love. And when they go through life and they know, hey, I know no matter what goes on, I can pick up a phone. I know I can show up at mom's house and I know she's going to love me. She's going to hug me. She's going to talk to me. She's going to allow me to open my heart to her. That's the most important thing to show that love and care. Even as an adult years. Maybe tonight some of you need to pick up a phone and call an adult son or daughter and say, listen, I want to tell you I love you. Maybe you take time to write a little note or, or go out of your way to spend a little time even with an adult child and let, make sure that they still know that you care for them. And then lastly, will they leave this world as a man or woman of character by following Jesus? And you're doing the right thing and I'm striving the right thing, have them in church, have them in a Christian school, have them in a Christian home, teach them biblical principles and our example of hard work and, and you're doing that also. And trying to teach them to be like Christ, to care for people, people to be honest, to be reliable. And so they can go through life with a testimony and saying, I came in with not any of these good traits, but dad and mom taught me these things. And I left as a person that people respected, a person that people looked up to, a person that acted like Christ. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads, please. Just challenge the parents tonight. So maybe we don't do this a lot, but sometimes on these mother nights, mother's days, these father days, when we do this, um, I'm actually asking, I'm going to have my wife and kids come up here in a moment.